Thrive Guys, episode three, habit tracking. One of the things we talked about last week was sharing a win of the week. Mm. And I don't know whether you've given this much thought, uh, but yeah, I'm keen to hear where you won this week. However, however big, small, let's start the, start the, the weekend with some positivity. I've got two wins from last week and maybe this week. Last week for me was Spanish. Uh, I'm learning Spanish and I was top of the leaderboard and I put a lot of effort into it. Nice. In terms of I didn't waste downtime, but if I wasn't doing anything uh, on my lunch break or anything like that, I would just load up um, Duolingo and just go for a couple of lessons. Nice. Um, and I seem to be able to understand sort of basic conversation. So that's a win for me. Um, Amazing. This week it was part of the services that we offer at the company I work at is like a managed service proposition and we do health checks like an overall system health check and I've kind of documentized that and I've made it through automation so that we can just change the client name and it will auto generate the document so doing a bit of automation just kind of was a big win for me it just means it takes you know more off my plate and gives me more free time so brilliant what about yourself so I had a couple of wins this week I had some good decisions on like projects that I'm working on mm -hmm. uh, for for closing this month. So that's good. Um, but the one I wanted to share was basically part of, and we'll get to habits in a minute, but this is kind of part of it. So this is why I wanted to share it. Yeah, yeah. I used to spend quite a lot of time when I woke up, I wake up usually at like between quarter past and half past six. And I would not actually properly get out of bed probably for about an hour to be fair because i'd have my coffee and you know do some scrolling on on social media etc um so quite a long time really and um one of the wins that i I, uh, I feel quite pleased about this week is that didn't happen so i i managed to get up half an hour earlier than i usually do in terms of waking up so i woke up six o'clock every day i managed to be out of bed by half six after I've had my coffee and all that kind of stuff. Basically, it meant that I was in front of my desk ready to go, um, ready to kind of start my day about 40 minutes earlier than than I usually was. And I didn't feel materially different in terms of, you know, tiredness or anything like that. So it wasn't like I, I really kind of gave away that much, but I gained something back in terms of time just because I was a little bit more intentional with how I used it. So um, yeah, pretty pleased with that. And I think I'll, you know, follow that process kind of going forward. I'm a big advocate of that because the only decision you have to make is whether you go to bed earlier as opposed to mm. like you just kind of sacrifice that. It's like it's fine though when you're locked down, you just kind of go, do you know what? Instead of going to bed at whatever time you go, just minus an hour, it means you can get up an hour earlier. Technically, you've done yeah. it for weeks and weeks. But you know me, I'm always up super early. That's like one of my positive habits is that I, I never lay in. I, I, I know some people probably hiss and boo at that and stuff, but you know, I just can't, I can't lay in. I was up at half six today, just yeah. like every other day. Because it, it, I, if I, I don't feel any better for laying in. I just don't. It doesn't make me feel good. It makes me feel kind of groggy and mm. I don't feel, I almost feel, it's weird. I feel this sense of guilt that I've wasted my free time. I've wasted the time that is kind of truly mine mm -hmm. and I can do with it whatever I want, but sleeping just feels like a waste of that time and i'm sure that for some people actually sleeping is you know almost like a hobby and it's like yeah. no that's my that's my free time and i'm going to use it for whatever i want and whatever i want is sleeping and that's fine yeah, you know? yeah. but for me it just it's not it's not what i want to do so um actually one of the things that is, is always a point of contention in my household is is getting up early on the weekend but kaylee and i were just downstairs having a, a chat and she was like are you not recording your show today and i was like yeah i am 15 minutes it's quarter to nine and it just it dawned on her that she'd got up early and she'd gone and done a load of stuff she'd done some yoga etc yeah, yeah. she was like oh wow it's actually good waking up early on the weekend, isn't it? And I was like, thank you. hundred <laughs> percent. And once you do it a couple of times, you're, you're on it. I mean, yeah. it's your free time. As you said, it's your free time on the weekend. Why wouldn't you use, why wouldn't you maximize on that opportunity? Exactly. Exactly. So we talked last week and I think the week before about habits and it's, it's really kind of serendipitous because I just finished a book about habits that I wanted to share with you to kind of kickstart the conversation in terms of what we do, how what habits we track, what's important to us, and perhaps the technology that we use to do it. 
so I just finished reading. I do that with inverted commas because I do audio books. That's kind of you know how I consume that kind of media. Atomic Habits by James Clear. And it was a paradigm shift for me in terms of, oh, okay, it started to click in terms of how I can form habits over time. Because one of the things that I have struggled with previously is forming habits and then sticking to them. But this book is not only an interesting kind of look at how the brain works and how habits are formed naturally, you know, from our instincts and and all of that kind of stuff. It uses that information to provide actually a really practical kind of field guide you know, on how to form good habits and stick to them and also break old ones. And it kind of got me thinking a little bit more around what we were going to talk about today. And so it's just kind of nice that, that I finished that book on Thursday and it's just nice that we're kind of fresh into, into the conversation today. So I know they say something like it takes a couple of weeks or a couple of repeat activities for something to be formed as like a quote unquote habit, doesn't it? It's not about the time, it's about the frequency. So if you gave something three months but only did it three times, it's not going to be a habit. But if you gave something two weeks and did it every day, Mm. it's going to form a habit. And given the time of year, I'd be surprised if there weren't people out there who were just giving up on their resolutions. Yeah, for sure. If they've made them, (laughs) they've bought that gym membership and, uh, well, actually, no, they didn't because we can't go to gyms at the moment. But you get what I mean, right? So, look. I'm keen to understand a little bit more about kind of what's important to you from a habit tracking point of view, what you track, how you track it, but also what you're deciding to do differently this year, perhaps to what you were doing last year in terms of habits. So yeah, over to you. I track so much stuff just for my own peace of mind. Um, I basically just track stuff for a data purpose just so I can say, oh, I remember when I was trying that. So, I mean, I use an app called Streaks and I'm just going to open it up so I can tell you what I've got. And I'll I'll go through these all in detail because I track everything. I'll start with the simple one. Like I found I wasn't drinking enough water, so I have drink four cups of water. And that's four big cups because sometimes you work and you just get stuck into the routine of just working. You'll have coffee, you'll have tea and you feel, you know, hydrated to some extent, but you're not drinking water, which is what your your body definitely craves. And sometimes you just sat there. I used to have it where I'd sit and maybe by about two o'clock I've got a headache just tracking that is a good way of making sure that you do it. Even if you get to the end of the day and you're like, oh crap, like normally I have one in the morning, one about mid morning, one after lunch, and then one at some point throughout the late evening. So that's one. I've also got on there to walk five kilometers a day and that's synced with my Apple watch. So I don't have to think about it, but I, if I'm getting ready to sort of wind down for the day and I see that it's at 4.4 K or whatever, then it's like motivation to go out and do something because I just tend to find that you if you're working from home and you have been for years, it you can get stuck into this kind of sedentary lifestyle where you just sat around mm. doing nothing and you very quickly become lazy and that's your mindset. I've also got learner language on there and I've left it as learner language because I wasn't sure what I wanted to learn uh, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to dedicate time just to one language as a habit. It, it was kind of stick with one, see how see how I go and then if I yeah. wanted to change it and it's just kind of an overarching task you know and I just I don't set I have got a timer on it of 10 minutes learning every day but I don't really tend to track that I tend to just click it once I've done a couple of lessons uh, or if I'm feeling you know that I haven't done enough then I'll set the timer and just blitz for it Um, I did have one for study that's disabled on the weekend because sometimes I find in the week if I'm doing nothing it's all just make sure you tick that off study something Um, whatever interests you at the time I'm not studying for any exams in particular um or focusing on anything in particular but just try and learn right expand the knowledge yeah yeah exactly yeah that's what you want to do it's kind of boring to just focus on the same things all the time so i've also got on there 10 minutes for reading a book which unfortunately i haven't been doing Um, and i can see that because on streaks it totals up uh, how many days in a row you've done something and it's just sat on none that's just part of my sort of longer term plan is that once it starts you then you see that number go up and it gives you that little dopamine hit where you're like oh I don't want to let that streak go. Like we're learning a language I'm on. I've been learning a language for 292 days now. Solid. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, Dan. Congratulations. Thank you. That's consistency. Like I I I just wanted to add to to your your comment there. I have used streaks and still use streaks and gamification is really powerful to make you continue to do 100%. things and 
making sure that you keep those little stars going is weirdly incentive enough to okay yeah i'll just uh, i'll just have another cup of water or i'll just go out for a walk or, or i will eat a healthy meal because i don't want to kill my streak i don't want my streak to die exactly something it's really good at so um yeah no i totally get that so it'd be nice if you could share it with your friends so you could see if somebody had um you know missed a streak or lost their streak i mean that's the kind of thing that motivates me with duolingo is that you can see a leaderboard and you can see where you are you can see where your friends are but also, yeah. if you lose your streak, like imagine just sort of 300 days odd, just bish, bash, bosh, back to one. It's like you do feel a bit about that. And I also have like exercise on here, which I have really let laps because I've been doing that run um, and I'm running every day. I kind of just let these laps. But when we were climbing and stuff like that, it was like a good goal to keep maintaining that. So I had like 20 sit ups, but it was in blocks of 20 up to 100. So I would just hit it when I'd done 20 sit-ups. Same with chin-ups. I would try and do 10 a day. And press-ups, I was aiming for 100 a day because of One Punch Man and all that sort of stuff. But weirdly, I've started tracking nice. how many times it's been, how many days it's been since I've shaved and had a haircut. That's interesting. Because I keep saying to, to my girl, or to Kerry, obviously, I keep saying to her that I want to grow my hair out. And I started before and then I just gave up. And I was like, well, what better way to try and motivate myself to keep growing it and just ignore it than calculating how many days I've gone without. Obviously, I'm not going to let myself become unkempt and sort of caveman-esque, but I want to grow my hair. So it's like trying to work out when it is and how long it's been since I made that decision because you, you kind of neglect the fact that it does take a while to grow your hair. And for me, like you've seen how many haircuts I go through and how many different changes I go. I'll just shave it off sometimes, but like, I'm done. And I've had no hair for a while. And it's like you kind of speak to people that are bald, you know, obviously and often. And they say, just try to enjoy your hair whilst you got it, you know. So I think I'm going to yeah. try and grow it out and see what I can do with it. I know that feeling wholeheartedly. You know, I'm not in a position where I'm losing my hair yet, but I know that a lot of people in my family have started losing their, or have lost their hair. My uncle lost it when he was 19. My dad lost it when he was in his mid-30s, I think. And so, you know, my hairline is pretty pretty decent right now but i know that it's coming which is why i started growing my hair out you know at the top end of march um sorry anyway carry on i was gonna say i mean like I've, I've mainly talked about good habits but the the whole thing with um streaks that i started with was to track how many days i'd stopped drinking alcohol because i had quite a few issues with alcohol over the years not you know yeah we don't need to really go into that we've sort of discussed it before and for me it was like a big push to be like you know what you've not drunk alcohol for this amount of days and like now i'm on 377 days so it's over Brilliant. a year and that kind of all just started just literally saying i don't want to drink anymore bosh so i think mm. you know it's worth highlighting that there's good and bad habits one of my bad habits was drinking and i just felt like i was wholly unproductive when i drunk um like you'd miss out on days so you'd go out drinking on a saturday even on a friday and you'd feel lethargic and hungover and for me probably throwing my guts up <laughs> speaking to the porcelain telephone <laughs> <laughs> the porcelain telephone <laughs> i've never heard that before that is excellent oh uh, i can't take credit i for wish it. I, I knew that from, 10 but... years ago like because <laughs> like like you i don't drink anymore so i'm probably never going to have a conversation with the porcelain telephone again but <sighs> <laughs> You know, you, you drink nuts. on a Friday and then the Saturday and Sunday are kind of written off. And when you have aspirations yeah. and stuff, like I wanted to set up an audio business and do bits of audio work on the side, if you're missing out on days at a time, it wholly affects like your, your long-term goals and it pushes them back. Yeah. Imagine, for me, working a full-time job, the weekends are the time where I would fortunately be able to do quite a lot of extra additional audio work and stuff like that without interfering with my day job. And if I'm drinking on a Friday and then missing out on a Saturday and Sunday, then how do, how are you ever supposed to achieve your, any of your goals? I mean, obviously, there are people that just drink not like a normal person and have a couple of beers and go home and feel all right in the morning. But, you know, if you're not that way inclined, then it becomes a bit more difficult. And I tried multiple things over the years. So it, with regards to habits, I, I tend to stick to the side of positive habits. There's not much I'm trying to give up at the moment. But I think that in your situation where you've given up alcohol, you, you mentioned that it was impacting your productivity. If you were trying to start a side business, which you can only really do at the weekend, you know, that it's very difficult to actually have the the brain capacity to do a side hustle in the evenings. It's really hard to kind of stay motivated beyond a nine hour work day, right? Yeah. But if you're basically killing your brain cells to the point where you just have to check out on Saturday and Sunday and 
and just veg in front of the telly and eat pizza, which actually sounds really nice. But but you, you know what I mean? Like you want to do something that's more meaningful. If that means that, okay, I need to get that out of my life in order to achieve what I really want to achieve, that is a really worthwhile exercise. Yeah. And look, you know, I, I gave up alcohol pretty much the same time you did, mm-hmm. but for different reasons. Oh, for broadly the same reasons. I didn't have a, I didn't necessarily have any kind of problem with it. I wasn't a big drinker to start with, mm-hmm. but the hangovers would just destroy my weekends and it would just be, it would be horrific. And I, I didn't really like the person that I was when I was drunk either, to be honest with you. So it sounds, I don't want to sound too cheesy, but you should be really proud of yourself in terms of that length of time. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. So what, what habits do you have? Okay. I need to take a step back and kind of describe, because this has changed quite drastically for me in the last month. So historically, I would kind of track some habits. I would kind of, you know, okay, I kind of want to do this. I kind of want to do that. So I'll use streaks and I'll track them. So the things that I tracked before were, you know, drinking enough water. So I would try and drink two liters of water a day. So similar to you, I'd have that in kind of broken down into four or 500 mil glasses. I would uh, eat one healthy meal per day, which has become really quite easy because, you know, since the since the pandemic i you know just eat huel for lunch the, the hot and savory stuff and that's like a complete healthy nutritionally complete meal so that's like tick in the box really easy to do and then i would do some of the other stuff around um you know making sure that i close my rings you know etc cetera, etc cetera. but th- to be honest before before the pandemic hit i would seldom close my rings it wouldn't be something that i'd be that kind of cognizant of mm. so closing your rings you're talking about on the apple watch right yeah, I am, yeah. So those goals include being active, right, per hour and then yeah. standing 12, 12 times a day for more, is it more than two minutes or something? It's Can't more remember. than a minute and then and then you have a calorie burn goal that um, that you hit. I know you always hit your exercise goal and I think the big problem, which is ridiculous, that it's ridiculous that people don't make the stand goal, I'm included. Like imagine, yeah. you know, you're working from home, I have a stand-up desk and I still don't hit the stand goal sometimes. And no, I'm up at crazy, six o'clock in the morning, and I, like before you know it, you've just sat stationary for an hour. So you're right. And I think before, like last year, maybe you know, top of last year, I wasn't really kind of um, thinking about habits that much. I wasn't really thinking about improving myself. And I had this idea. It's actually something that I heard on a another podcast that I listened to called Cortex, and it's called they talk about yearly themes mm-hmm. rather than like a new year's resolution right it's it's a more broad and vague principle that you want to live your next year by or your next season by or whatever period of time and it it just kind of designed to help shape your thinking in terms of okay these are the things that i want to change in terms of goals or or, or in terms of habits or whatever to be more like the person i want to be but it's all within the principle of this particular theme so the theme for me this year in 2021 is i call it the year of prestige vague enough that i have no idea what you mean so i'm, I'm all ears <laughs> I think you'll like the explanation because it was quite literally a middle of the night eureka moment where my th- my theme was called the year of leveling up, right? And the whole kind of principle was I want to improve some parts of my life um, to become, you know, a better person than I was before. Improve those charisma stats and intelligente stats. <laughs> okay, you're already kind of getting it now. So just like in video games, when you reach the highest plateau of the level or whatever it might be right you get an opportunity to take a prestige level where basically you start again and it makes the game challenging again but you've got all of that experience from having played the game for the last period of time that you can then apply to make things more interesting because you kind of know how the game works now but you want to go right rather than focusing on charisma i want to focus on agility or whatever it might be but i still have those kind of innate charisma stats and those charisma perks in my in my mind whilst i might not have them in my game character anymore if that yeah, makes yeah sense. No, i get you i actually really so, like the terminology using prestige as yeah. a as a theme I, I i'm really on board with that i think that's brilliant that's great i'm glad i feel like i've reached a point in my life where i need to reshape some of my basic kind of principles 
if I'm honest with you, I think some aspects of my life have become a little bit stale. Like I've been phoning some of the aspects of my life in. Yeah, our friendship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ooh, <coughs> this Ooh, podcast. Salty. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Episode three and I'm already phoning it in. Yeah. <laughs> so hitting prestige, right? It means a clean slate. It means, right, I'm going to start again and I'm going to reshape the person that I then level up to be with all the experience that I've got from playing the game for the last 31 years. I think that means that I can use the experience that I've kind of accrued, but apply it to different skills, different perks to become better overall. Mm. And that's what I want to do this year. And I want to focus on a couple of things that I've split into seasons. So this is why I kind of wanted to explain it because the sp- Spring, which is where I think we're in now, is the spring of reading. Yep. So I want to spend more time this season broadening my knowledge on different topics. And actually, I'm quite interested in philosophy, as an example, and in particular, Stoicism. And so I want to try and broaden my knowledge on philosophy, Stoicism, and I want to try and broaden my knowledge on productivity because you know different aspects of you know what people talk about from a productivity point of view i feel will benefit my life and so long story short my spring of reading has influenced my daily habits and has influenced the habits that i track so in addition to the things i talked about you know a few minutes ago in terms of you know healthy Mm -hmm. meal uh, water and some of the other bits that i can't remember now I have added additional habits. So I'm tracking how much time I read every day. And that's both audiobook and written book. So do you set like a timer of how long you want to read or do you just read and then go, actually, I've listened to or I've read 15 minutes worth? This is the beauty of the system. You're going to love this, right? So, so I want to read 30 minutes every day, Yep. right? So I've exchanged in the morning what we talked about at the top of the thing uh, where I get I wake up at six rather than scrolling Reddit or scrolling the news or whatever it might be. I've exchanged that with reading a book called The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. And this is a great book where essentially you read a passage every day and it's a quote from one of the great Stoics, which mm-hmm. whose names I won't try and pronounce because they're all weird Greek names that um, I could barely read. (laughs) Steve, yeah. yeah. Um, Greek Steve. Greek Steve. Yeah, what's that? Uh, Chinese Alan from Gavin and (laughs) Stacey. So you get the little quote and then you get the the author of the book, Ryan Holiday, has then provided some kind of modern context and explanation that that you can reflect on. So what I do is I read it out loud to make Mm -hmm. sure that I read it. We're having coffee in bed. I read it out loud to Kaylee. And then we talk about what we think about the the quote and what we think about the That's message awesome. and all of that kind of stuff, which is awesome. It, it gives us a little opportunity to to chat at the top of the day, and, but also it's chatting about something that's meaningful and mm. that's something that's going to help us clear our minds and get ready for the day. I think that's wicked. So the second thing that I do, this is why this is genius, right? The second thing that I do, and this is a habit that I've formed over the pandemic period is... I have a kind of a commute in inverted commas to work where I walk for half an hour before I sit down at my desk. And so it's called in the uh, in the Atomic Habits book that I read, it's called Habit Stacking. So mm-hmm. you basically either queue up habits to one after the other or you do them together so that you can actually do them. And uh, so when I go out for my half an hour walk, which is something that I track from a habit point of view, rather than listening to music or listening to a podcast, I listen to one of these audio books. So, you know, in the last month, I've finished two books. I finished Atomic Habits and I also finished The Alchemist, um, which I think I I talked to you about last time. But how does that compare to before you started tracking it? Zero books. That's where I'm at at the moment. So maybe I'm going to give this a go. I have had an Audible subscription for like three years. I had like 10 credits. I would just have like 10 months worth of books that I just hadn't spent my credit on. And so now I don't. Now I have zero credits because I've actually been using it. And so by stacking that habit, I've read two books in a month, which is infinity percent more than I ever did. Yeah. So, so yeah, which is amazing. And, and like you, from a technology point of view, I use, uh, I use streaks to track all of that. So there's a couple other things I track as well. So I'll just kind of talk through it, if that's all right. So I track meditation, which I'm really bad at doing. You don't strike me as a mindfulness person. As a stop for a second and just chill. 
which yeah, is I'm not. which is kind of based on last week's podcast. Sometimes you have to just stop and you know be a, not necessarily. Maybe it sounds a bit morbid when you say it like this, but kind of just be alone with your thoughts. It gives you self awareness in terms of. For me, it's very calming in the sense that you're just like, do you know what? Things will be okay. You're you're alive. You're breathing, especially when you focus yeah. solely on your breathing. I mean, I, I think this is something that Kaylee's really interested in as well, isn't she? So she is, yeah. And I and I wish I did it more, um, which is why I'm trying to track it as a habit. It's it's one of the depressing habits that I track where there's not a little number against it. Unfortunately, yet. just like your ten minutes of reading yeah. yet, but it's something that I want to do more of. And so, yeah, obviously I track the healthy meal, I track the two litres of water, I track reading a book for 30 minutes, um, I track planning my day. And what I, what I mean by planning my day is I do a daily boot up where I basically mm-hmm. set my intentions of what I'm going to achieve that day. Even at the weekend, I did it, I did it this morning. Um, and it just helps me set the, set the precedent. Look, I'm going to start today and I'm going to set some intentions. Even if th- those intentions are chill out, don't think about work, you know, they're just as good. Oh, that um, very that forced also, relaxation, my favourite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Planned, planned free time. So I have a bot that messages me on the platform we use. It just says, "Morning, remember to update your tasks." That's good. So for me, I'm sat doing my work, or even if I've started early, and I'll just get a ping come up at nine o'clock every morning. So it looks like someone's messaged me. So I'm instantly like, "Oh, who's message? What's that?" Uh, and it's just a message from past me saying make sure you update your tasks every day and you'd think it'd get annoying but for me it's just like one of those things that i now don't have to remember yeah so um that's really good and this is why i use streaks um because i also track it in my notion database which has everything in but Mm -hmm. i use streaks because it's because of the notifications yeah i don't have the premium version which does like smart notifications i've just hand cranked the notifications so that like they remind me at particular times to like track that you've eaten a healthy meal to drink drink a glass of water etc involved with the planning my day is daily gratitude this is like my mindfulness this is this is the short amount of mindfulness that i do every day where i kind of say what i'm grateful for at the top of the day and i, and I do actually i genuinely think about it because sometimes it's really hard to to think about those positive things and go okay this is what i'm grateful for this is what i'm thankful for in the world so um what was my gratitude today i'll I'll share it with you this is usually private but why not so my gratitude today and i'll read it out i'm grateful for my early mornings with kaylee sipping coffee and getting ready for the day i know it might frustrate her a little bit me being such an early riser but i'm pretty confident she gets just as much value out of it as i do and this was before the conversation I had after she'd sort of done some yoga and stuff like that. And, and she was like, actually, this is great getting up in the morning. So it was like, I was like, I knew it was, I knew it was valuable. And I was just grateful that on a Saturday morning at half six, it's quiet. No one's up yet. And it's just like, you can just ease yourself into the day. It's really nice. So, you know, that, that was my, that was my gratitude. So I can echo that sentiment in terms of the, the peace and quiet because no normally you know i live uh very near a row of shops um yeah. and normally in the week the warburton's man he drives a big oh, old no. lorry and every morning maybe about quarter to seven he smashes his trolleys around in the back of it not with not a care for the world so i'm always up anyway so it doesn't bother me but yeah. every morning i hear it and i just think some i, I want to see just some lights go on and a window open and just say shut up shut up mr yeah. warburton <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really do treasure the peace and quiet on the weekend i don't think he arrives i don't think they get delivery so it's nice Brilliant. and quiet and just made even better by the fact that he doesn't turn up bloody war if he ever listens man. to this that's hilarious yeah if you ever listen to this you are heard <laughs> we know you <laughs> just have a bit of consideration god i oh, know it, it's it's yeah yeah that that would really wind me up i'm a very sound sensitive person mm. Um, and so it's Kaylee actually yeah. to be fair yeah and a light sleeper it's also yeah. worth just being grateful for having a partner that kind of is um, maybe is it sympathetic to your needs kind of thing in terms of getting up instead of like just maybe you know she could just stay in bed and be like you know you do what you want to do and I do what I want to do like I'm quite lucky that Kerry's quite supportive in the same way but she likes to have a lay in on the weekend sometimes but that's gradually getting earlier and earlier I'm chipping away at her because I'm up and I'm downstairs and I took a note out of Mr. Warburton's book and just start smashing down stairs, start opening and shutting drawers <laughs> and cupboards. And then Kerry's like, oh, you're up, yeah. 
Of course I'm up. Yeah, yeah, I'm up. Oh, crash. <laughs> <Yeah, it's like, laughs> comes down, I say, oh, so by the good. way, there's a smashed plate on the floor, so... <laughs> Yeah. Don't know who done oh that. yeah, no, sorry. It just it got to eight o'clock and you were still in bed, so I just thought I'd start <laughs> tearing up the kitchen. <laughs> so I also I also track um my journaling. So I try and journal every day. Um just put some thoughts in in terms of okay, this is what I did today, this is how I felt about it, stuff like that. So again, whilst I don't meditate, I try and do some mindfulness things to try and achieve that mental clarity. It's really good for your mental health as well, just having a journal in terms of describing how you feel. So you can look back at that and think, well, what made me, what triggered me? I know we talked about like um, mm. w- ruminating last week and stuff, and it's important to acknowledge how you feel and how 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 something made you feel particularly, especially when you're locked yeah. up at home and stuff. is is very important to acknowledge those feelings. So you keep a journal, mainly positive, or do you put the negatives in as well? It's everything, right? Because I essentially what I do is it, it's split into two two mm. halves. And I journal in the morning and I kind of record my mood. I think we talked about this last week. I basically give myself five minutes to just write. And it's at the, at the back end of my boot up routine where I kind of set my intentions. I kind of, you know, I practice my gratitude. And, uh, and then I write in my, in my journal. And it's usually, you know, writing about the walk that I took or writing about a conversation Kaylee and I had or something like that. And it's, you know, just recording and being reflective on how I feel. And then at the end of the day, as part of my shutdown routine, at the end of the workday, I'll write some things in there as well and I'll record my mood. And I tend not to actually write about like specific situations. I don't write about you know, uncomfortable calls with customers or anything like that. That doesn't tend to get in there. It's, it's more around, actually, you know, I had this for lunch and I went for a little walk mm-hmm. on my lunch and you know, just thinking about the world outside. And it kind of makes, makes me think that actually these things that bother me in the moment don't necessarily have a, a lasting effect and it's good to kind of to remind myself of that just by looking back at my journal and going actually all that stuff that I'm worried about now it never ends up in the journal so it can't really be that important do you know what I mean well that's like the email we were talking about last night that you received obviously we won't go into any details but it's the, the yeah. same kind of thing you ruminate on it and it something like that will wind you up and you're just thinking hmm is it really that important but it's easier said than done right if somebody says let it go it's like yeah, but you're not you're not living it. It's not something that was directed no. at you, kind of thing. Sometimes you need to get just those things out of your head and and just say the words of like this person is this or it's that or what a stupid thing to ask for or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then you kind of over it by that point. My journal would be um, pretty uninteresting if I'm honest. I, I do my same run every day, and like the most interesting thing that's happened to me this week is that I I trod in shit on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. And I was, what? I was fuming, but then obviously I was like, I can clean my shoes, but whoever sh- this is, <laughs> I'm fuming at you. <laughs> what was it, human poo? Uh, I didn't look, I didn't stop to look. I was running, but I just know it happened. Right. It was oh, icy wow. as well. So, anyway, crunchy. You hit on an interesting point that it's worth just kind of looking around and trying to absorb what we have, I guess. And um, just try and enjoy it instead of just thinking about the same concepts and letting yourself boil over. I think it's it just helps you like get clarity on what's important. Mm. I I think a lot of stress that I, I don't have this anymore. I don't feel this, but I know I felt it in the past. But a lot of stress that people have in their lives is because they are ruminating to what mm. to use your word over things that are outside of their control things that they literally cannot influence in any way but they don't like the way that they are so their reaction is trying to push against something that they literally can't push against and one of the reasons why i want to you know read more about the philosophy of stoicism is that it talks about the stoic prayer and it was um marcus aurelius i think is how you pronounce it but the quote is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's brilliant. This was written in ancient Greece, or whenever it was, like ages ago. Bloody ages ago. Before the year 2000, I can tell you that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) At least 10 years ago. (laughs) Maybe longer. But that applies to that applies so much more now to our lives yeah, yeah. than it probably ever did back then. You know, I don't know whether this is true, but I reckon people are now more anxious and stressed in 2020 and 2021 than they were in 
2000 BC. It certainly feels that way. Or there's more acknowledgement of it. There's more acknowledgement, I think, is probably right. But it's the Stoic philosophy is kind of even more relevant now than it than it ever was. You know, just from what I've read, it just it resonates so much with me. And actually having the serenity in quotes to accept the things I can't change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is so pertinent. It's like the things that you can change move hell or high water to make them the way that you want them to be. Sculpt them in the way and the image that you want them to kind of be in. And that is changing your habits, changing your mindset towards things, changing the way that you feel about certain situations. But the knowing the difference is it's changing the way you feel about something or changing your habits to improve yourself in a certain way. What you can't influence is what other people think, what other people do, and anything that's outside of your kind of sphere of control. And that's something that I'm hoping to learn more about it as the year goes on and I get to the end of this book, but it's really resonated with me so far. It's also, maybe I'm out of line for saying this, but I do tend to find that is much easier for people with more, quote, life experience or older people. Because I remember when I was in my maybe early 20s and somebody could walk past you in the street and say, you're ugly. And you'd, you know, it'd be a random drive by, a comp- uh, insult even, not a compliment, whatever. Random drive by insult. <laughs> and you kind of sit there and you think, I've never met this person. I, this isn't a real thing that happened to me, by the way. It's not like sure. a, a life story. But that sort of thing would just, you would go home and you think, well, am I? Whereas now if somebody walked past and said, you're ugly, I'd be like, so are you. Like, enjoy the rest of your day. And I wouldn't think about it again. I'd kind of come home and say, you never believe it, but I was just walking down the street and someone called me ugly. I remember before the pandemic, I, I grew up a mustache. You've seen me with a mustache a few times. And I, I, <laughs> I opened the door to a delivery driver. I showed you the video on the ring and he just looked at me and he said, nice mustache. And bef- if you were a bit younger, maybe I'd be like, oh, is he taking the, is he taking the piss? But yeah, exactly. I'm at that age where I was just like, whatever. Yeah, thanks, mate. Enjoy your day. Like, thanks for delivering my, my package. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. And didn't think anything of it. Like, I think that tends to come with, uh, you know, a bit more life experience and, it's easier to not care as much when you're kind of more cemented in your your career and your personal life and stuff like that. When I think when you're younger, it feels like there's a lot more things pulling at you. You've got a social life, you've got all of this stuff to think about. Where you get a bit older and they kind of become a bit less relevant, I guess. Maybe I'm wrong for saying that, but... Well, no, I think you're bang on, honestly. It'd be difficult to tell that to a 20-year-old and have them accept what you're saying. But I, I do think, you know, being someone who's gone through that as well I think you're absolutely right I think you're probably a little bit less sure of who you are Mm. when you're 20 versus 30 you know I'm pretty I know who I am I know broadly what's important to me and I know broadly how to manage my kind of emotions better now than than I used to like 10 years ago for example and I think that does definitely help but then stoicism can help even younger people practice because it's something that I think comes with with just age and getting your your backside handed to you a couple of times in mm. your mid-20s as we've all done you know we think we're impenetrable when we think An we're invincible force, when we're 20 yeah. <laughs> and yeah and then life hands you your ass on a plate it's like no 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 you are just like everyone else mate and you kind of think oh okay all right now I know I know the rules of the world and I think stoicism looks like on the surface of the 20 passages that i've read it can help anybody kind of you know move themselves more to that kind of point of view perhaps earlier than you know life experience can maybe i'm not sure but Mm. um yeah i'll send you the link to the book though it's really good yeah that'd be wicked i bought it on amazon for a pound it was literally a pound on kindle yeah it was so cheap or like i think it was maybe one or two pounds it might be two pounds but you know either way it sounds like it's helped you and yeah i think i'll definitely give it a read it's i've I've got the value from it in 20 days then maybe i can complete one of my habits which is to read daily so boom but that's the thing i think i put pressure on that by putting a timer on it by saying i want to read 10 minutes a day just say i want to read every day yeah Yeah. in fact whilst we're on the podcast i'm going to amend it now so i don't forget nice and while you're doing that this is the nice thing about a yearly theme is that it's flexible. You're not saying, like, I hate New Year's resolutions. I don't think they work. I think they're too... You, you set a goal at the top of the year and you go, oh, I want to lose, you know, a kilogram or, or 10 kilos or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And then you get to the end of the year and you've lost seven. You failed. But actually, you've trended 
massively in the right direction. You've basically got to 70% of your goal, which is pretty amazing, mm-hmm. right? But because you set this kind of arbitrary objective at the top of the year, which you didn't meet, you've then failed your New Year's resolution, which is kind of, it's not a good feeling. But if you have, like, using that example, the year of health, and the objective of that year is to do more healthy things, which the result is you lose weight. Yeah, but if you're just focusing on the process, the things that you do, the habits that you have, those sorts of things that are within your sphere of control, the results will happen as a result of the things. That's where the themes come in, right? Year of the health, right? Which is just generally be more active. That's largely more productive than saying, I want to do an hour of exercise every day. Because yeah. you do an hour of exercise one day and then the day after you're torn to shreds. You you don't give yourself time to recover. So then, as you said, you feel like you failed that goal. Whereas if you say, I'm going to be exactly. healthier and you get up on a Monday morning, you do an hour's run or something like that, you've achieved that goal broadly because that's what you wanted to do. If, even if you do that once a week, that's more than you've done before. Exactly. Honestly, like I'll send you the, the recording of the yearly themes and I'll share it because mm. this is not my idea. This is not something that I've come up with, but it's something that I really resonated with when I heard about it. And I've tried to kind of like take it into my identity and make it part of who I am because I think it can really help me achieve the end goals that I want to achieve without, you know, beating myself up if if I don't hit some arbitrary metric. So, so yeah, I don't know about you, Dan, but I'm out of coffee. So Correct. it feels like a, a good point to end. And uh, I'll see you next week then, mate. Thanks everybody for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to our show. And if you really, really liked it, please consider giving us a five-star rating. Yeah, that really helps us out, helps us grow our audience. So you know, only if you loved it, but if you did, then that would be that'd be really good. If you'd like to hear more from Dan or myself, please follow us on Twitter at ThriveGuysPod. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Say goodbye, Dan. Goodbye.